This problem is asking us for the time between two airports. And in order to get the time between two airports, we'll need to know what our ground speed is. And remember, when we've worked previous problems where we've used heading and ground speed, if we have the wind information and course information, then we can get to our true heading, but we'll also be given ground speed as well. So we're going to have to work at least the first part of this problem to get our ground speed. So we're going to start with the true course. So I'm going to draw a line between the two airports that we're going to be flying to and from. Once we determine, once we see the true course laid out, I'm going to go ahead and estimate what that heading is. So I'm going to just kind of estimate that course is oh, 15 degrees heading estimate. Then I'm going to draw, line, draw the line of longitude, or at least highlight the line of longitude that I want to use for the reference. And I'm going to focus here where the line of longitude intersects the course. I'm going to lay the, lay the plotter down right on line with the course that we've drawn and center the plotter where those two lines intersect. So I've got the plotter centered, line up with the course. Now I can zoom in and we can see about what heading is indicated where the line of longitude intersects the degrees. So here we can see 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 11, 12. Looks like it's a 12 degree true course. And that's pretty close to what we estimated. So that's a little bit more confirmation that we've played the plotter correctly. True course, 15 degrees. Now we need to, or uh, 12 degrees. Now we can use the E6B to account for wind to get our ground speed. So heading and ground speed function, enter. Wind is given at 330 at 25 knots. Course, 12 degrees. Airspeed is given in the problem of 100 knots. And now it gives us our ground speed and it also gives us our true heading. So I'm going to go ahead and write both down just in case I need them later in the problem. So ground speed equals 80 knots and we have a true heading of 2 degrees. So we've worked this part of the formula in order to get the ground speed. Because we aren't asked for magnetic heading or compass heading, that's as far as we need to go because we only had to do this part in order to get ground speed. So now that we have the ground speed, we can move on to the next part of the problem. Once we have ground speed, if we know the distance between two airports, we can determine how long it's going to take us to fly between those two airports. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the plotter, turn the plotter around and line it up so that I've got one airport on zero nautical miles down here, and I'm going to lay the plotter all the way, look up to where the other airport intersect the plotter on this side, and we're reading across here. We see 40 nautical miles, 50 nautical miles, and this is just shy of 60 nautical miles, so it looks like it's about 50 nauti 59 nautical miles where it lines up. So once we have the ground speed and the distance, we can determine how long it's going to take to fly between those two airports. We're going to go to the E6B, and we're going to go to the flight portion and down to leg time. So this is the leg time for that flight. We're give, we enter the distance of 59 nautical miles, and we enter the ground speed of 80 knots, and that gives us 44 minutes and 15 seconds. Every time I get an answer, 
that I think is correct, I go back and read the problem one more time. In this case, after reading the problem, you'll see that we also have to add three and a half minutes in order to get to the correct answer. And remember, this answer, 44 minutes and 15 seconds, will be one of the options on the written. So if you don't add the three and a half minutes, you will not get to the correct answer. So read the entire problem one additional time before you submit your answer. So here I'm going to go ahead and add three minutes, three minutes and 30 seconds. And what I'll do is I'll show you how to add time on the E6B. So to add time, the first column we enter is the number of hours. So I'm going to say zero, zero hours, colon, 44 minutes, colon, and 15 seconds. I'm going to say plus zero zero hours zero three minutes and thirty seconds. That's going to give a total time in route of forty seven minutes and forty five seconds, and then this will be your correct answer.